Okay, so we're back with part two. So we've made our database connection modular. What we now want to do is make our security check that we have on our athletes page. We want to make that modular. So what I'm going to do is make a new file and we're going to move this code into that file and then there, we're going to require that file on any of the pages that we figure should be private. Right now our athletes page is private but none of the other ones are private. So for example, I could go to the delete page, right, if I were to grab this link to delete, if I copy it, if I hit enter here and it runs that page, the delete page is gonna load and I'm gonna be deleting that record, even though I'm not logged in. Okay, so we need to be able to prevent that, obviously. Even though it's a hidden page, it still is performing some kind of database action that only an authenticated user should have. So let's make a new PHP file. I'm going to take out all the HTML because much like our database file, this is just going to be code only. I'm going to give this one the name. I'm just going to save it. I'll save it as auth.php, auth, short for authentication. So what we'll do here is we'll put our PHP tags in here. I'll just save the file this way. It's not going to do very much right now. <laughs> so now we we'll want to go to our athletes page. We'll want to take the security check that we put on the top of our athletes page at the end of week six. We're going to paste it in here. So these, this section in green from lines three to 12 connect to the session, check whether we have a user ID stored in the session variable, uh, session collection. If we don't, redirect back to login. So I'm just going to cut that and, oops. Paste it into the auth file. So I've removed it from here, so what should go here in its place? Righto? Yeah, well, let's call require once. And we'll link our auth.php page right here. So now I should be, I'm going to upload athletes and I'm going to upload auth. And I want to make sure that our athletes page is still private. We've just moved the code into that secondary file. So now if I go to athletes, in Firefox I'm logged in, so I can still refresh this page. Now if I take that URL and go down to Chrome, where I'm not logged in. Yep, our security check is still running because it's kicking me back to the login screen. Anytime I try and load the athlete's page, it kicks me back to login. So our code's still working, we've just moved it out of the page and moved it into a separate file. We'll let that chug along. So our athletes page had this check, but our other pages didn't. So we're going to want to take that same code and copy it so at the top of our athlete page we we'll need to open PHP tags. We also need to call OB start at the top. Why? Right, because if our authentication check fails, we're going to redirect the user, and that redirect will fail if we don't call OB start at the top and OB flush at the bottom. 
So I'm going to add the object buffer start at the top, add our authentication check, and then down at the bottom. we'll add OB flush. So now this page should be private. Right now it's public. So I can get here in Chrome even though I'm not logged in. So that's a problem. So once I re-upload Athlete, now if I go back to Chrome and refresh, I should get kicked back to the login screen, right? I'm not logged in. So there's no identity in the session. Now it takes me to log in. So we've just secured that page now. Right? When I hit add, Firefox, I'm good. So we'll want to add this same code again. Our save page already has OB start and flush because we're doing a redirection on both. So our delete has it as well. So we just need after OB start, we'll add our authentication check here on our delete, and we'll do the same thing on save. So after we call OB start, so now all four pages are private. So the only way a user has any access to our athletes page is if they log in. So I'll just re-upload those. And now, even if I try going to delete, I still get kicked back to log in. So those pages have all been secured. And it's much more efficient for us to put this check in our separate file and just call require once. That way we only have to repeat this one line rather than repeating all 10 of those lines of code on every page. So what else do you see here that we could uh, make modular? What else are we repeating? So here's our athlete page. Here's athletes. Yeah, so we've got these links to bootstrap in the header. We want to make a header a common header anyway. So we can have some shared links and a common title. And we can also move those CSS links into our header. And then we can just link in our header. Would be more efficient. That way if we want to add additional, we want to add our own custom CSS, we don't have to add it to every page. We just add it to the header. And all those pages will inherit it. So let's make a new page. I'm going to save this one as header.php. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to put in a navigation bar. And we'll use some of the bootstrap classes to style it. Um, actually, I guess before we do that, we should take our bootstrap links so I'm just going to grab those two links, copy those, and I'm going to put those here. So we'll make a simple navigation bar 
and then we'll style it. So I'm going to create a nav tag. I'll use that class. We'll put in a title that'll be a link back to our Well, let's see where should this go. I show this. Well, I won't put in a link. I'll just put in. I don't know where it's going to link to for now. <laughs> Normally, we'd have that as a default page. So this will kind of be our title. So this will appear in bold text at the top left, which is typically where we'd find the name of the site or a logo. And we'll put in a couple links. The first that goes to our athletes page. And the second that goes to our athlete singular page and the text of that will say new athlete. So we'll have a link to our list page and a link to our new page. So we want this to appear at the top of all the pages in the site. I'll probably add a few more classes in here. So if we want to add it here, where should we add it? We want to link our header in. Where should it go? What line number would you recommend we put the header? Under add new OK, so let's try it right here. So before our database connection, we'll try, let's try it here and see. We're probably going to have to make a few adjustments. So I'll add it in before we, have, before we connect to our database. We'll display the header. So I'm going to upload header, upload athletes. OK, well. We're getting somewhere. We'll obviously want to give a class to that list so they don't show as bulleted as bullets, and we want those showing across the page rather than stacked vertically. Do we need this link anymore? No, no we can get rid of it because that link is now in our nav bar. So I'm going to take that link out. And I'll just go to. See what class I want here. Um, so we want nav space nav bar nav. So in our header, this should remove the bullets and write the items in the list across the page rather than stacking them vertically if we apply that class. So I'm going to try that. We'll see if it looks better. It should. I'll re-upload those two pages. Let's try it out again. Yeah, that's better. So we've got our title. That giving it that class of navbar brand makes it larger. 
and then we've got our two legs. So it's starting to look, we've got this little roller effect, sort of starting to look like an actual application. We won't get carried away with how it looks, but it at least needs to be structured properly. Now if I click on new, I get new, but our, we're missing our header here. But we also need to do some HTML cleanup. Right? So we've got the doc type and the CSS files linked from our athletes page. <laughs> we also have all of this stuff in our header and we have two sets of body opening body tags. So we can't have both, we can't have this duplication, our document's no longer well formatted. So there's really no right and no wrong answer here. We got two options. We can leave this, these sets of tags in the header and remove them from here, or we can leave them in athletes and athlete and remove them from header. Which one do you think would make more sense? Both will work, so there isn't really a right and a wrong. Where would you prefer, we, where should we leave the code and where should we take it out of? What do you think, John? I'd say take it out of the header, that way you can always change the title or any corresponding, if you need a new JavaScript uh, link file. Okay, true, although we could set the title with, P we could set the title with a PHP variable. In fact, we'll do that. So that would be one reason. What would be some of the benefits of leaving those tags in the header and removing them from each individual page? I would suggest that might be a little bit more efficient. Why? Because we only need to make the change in one file. Right. So let's say we want to add and let's say we want to build our own custom style sheet in addition to this. Like we've got some classes that Bootstrap doesn't handle. We could just link it right here. If we take this stuff out of here, we've got to repeat all of that stuff and make that change on every page. So there's no right and wrong. If you prefer to leave those tags on each of the pages and take them out of the header, fine. I'm going to do it the other way and then, but the title is an important one. You did make that point, right? We've got a title tag here. Here it says athletes. Here it says athlete information. If we take this section out and keep it here, we're going to want to dynamically set the title in our header, but we could use a PHP variable for this. So I'm going to keep this. There is something that should come out of here. What tags should come out of the header that don't belong here? Uh, good guess. We're going to keep the title. Give you a hint. They're visible right now. <laughs> Right, Chad, why should these not be here? Because it would stop the rest of the content that we have on our page from printing. Well, it doesn't technically stop it, but where should those tags go? The the at the very bottom. This is going to appear at the top before our content. So let's remove those, and we'll deal with those later. But we don't want them in the header because that indicates our page is done. The page isn't done here. So I'm going to take out those two tags, the end body and end head. We'll re-upload header. And now we want to clean up some of the HTML here. So starting from doc type, I'm back on my athletes page. I'm going to take out everything from the body to the doc type. There, I think you can see it all. So starting on doc type, all the way down to opening of the body, I'm going to get rid of those because all of those tags will come from the header. So we're breaking our page up now. So the header contains some of the HTML, and our each individual page will contain the main section of HTML. And in fact, I don't even need that extra set of PHP tags. So now this page... <laughs> is largely a collection of other pages, right? It has some of its own content in the middle, but the header, the database connection, the security, all those things are happening in other places. So now if I re-upload these two pages, it should work, 
should work the same way. And if we look, I'll get to your question in just one sec. If we look at the source, now our source should be clean. We should have one proper set of HTML tags from start to bottom. So our page still works. And if we view the source, this is the output from our header. This is the output from our, sorry, this is included in the header as well. And this is where the content on athletes starts, right here. And then we have one set of MD, M tags, which we'll deal with. Yeah, great question. So can we nest the requiring? Yes, we could. So in fact, if we wanted to, we could require the database file in our header, which means we don't have to then require the database file on each page. So if we move this line into header, we no longer need to require the database file. As long as we require the header, the header requires the database. So we can nest and everything is still available. So if you want, I'm going to keep them separate just because I think it's a little more clear. Um, but it's fine if you were to, if you wanted to do nesting like that. Yes, absolutely. It's a very good question. Okay. So let's do the same now on our athlete page. So our header. Our athletes page looks good. We have our header, except when we click new, we've still got the old version with this link, right? Our header's gone. So let's clean up the athletes page. We'll make the same changes so that this page will share that header. So I'll open up athlete. Again, I'm going to start on the doc type. So between the doc type and the opening body tag, uh, whoops, actually, no, I can't. We're going to have to break this up into sections. <laughs> yeah, because we do have some PHP code running in the header we don't want to delete. <laughs> so this section in green is going to go. The doc type, HTML head, meta, title, and CSS links. Let's delete those. All of those are coming from our header. We can also get rid of the end body and end head tag, because those things also live in header. So now I'm just going to remove that set of PHP tags. And after my auth, And John, I'm glad you raised the issue of the title because we'll get to that. We will want to set the title tags. So now we just require our security. We require our header. We check whether we have an existing ID and whether we need to look up a record or whether we're showing a blank form. I just want to make sure it's something I Is down below the PHP that was in the header, we just got rid of the head, head. There was an end head and end body. Or begin body? Yeah, sorry, begin body. Okay. My, my mistake, thank you. So we had an end head and an opening body. We don't need those because those are now those now live in the head file. Okay. So now when I upload athlete and refresh, now we've got our nav bar. We also still have this old link here that says list athletes. We can get rid of that because we've got a navigation bar to move around in instead. So on athlete.php, the first line of HTML code now, right here, was our old link that we added back in week six. We can blow that off. We've got a link in the header instead. So that line in green, we don't need it anymore. Let's get rid of it. That was just a makeshift navigation until we got to today's class. So we've got this common header. We can navigate around. If we click edit, you know, we're loading the same page, so we've still got our navigation bar here. 
and our HTML format's nice and clean. There's no red tags, meaning nothing's missing or duplicated. Now, we've lost our page titles because <laughs> we've blown away the title tags, so we want to fix that. So how can we do it? Great idea. So in our header, where it says in untitled one, we can print out a PHP variable, and we can just set that variable on each page. So on my athletes page, before we, we have to do this before we require header. So set the page title. So I'm going to create a variable called title. So on this page, we'll set it to athletes. Okay, that's what we had before in the title that we got rid of. <laughs> so this variable is now going to be available in our header.php. So if we go to our header.php, we should be able to just echo out that variable inside of the title tag. So where it says untitled one, I'll delete that. And we're going to make our title dynamic. It will be set on each page. So I'm going to upload header and upload athletes. And we'll see if that problem goes away, if we now have a page title showing up. And if it works, then we can do the same thing on our athlete page. We can provide a different title to the header. So now our title's back. It says athletes. Now notice it's important. It's important that we set this variable before we require the header. What happens if I require the header first? What will the page title say? Yeah, it's going to say, un it's going to be blank. So if I do it this way and refresh, page title's gone, right? So we have to set that variable first and then link to our header because then the header can use that variable. So those variables are global to all the pages we're requiring. So I'm going to undo that. We want that to happen before. So I'm going to do the same thing on my athlete page, is set the title to oops. I'll give it a title of athlete details. I think that's what we had originally on this page. I haven't uploaded it yet. Right now, when I click new, see I get nothing. If I save this change, where we're setting a value of the title variable first, and then we're calling the header. If I upload that change and click new, now my title's there. And it doesn't matter whether we're adding or editing, we've got our title. Now, are there any other pages we should, where else I would suggest we might want to add the header to a couple of the other pages in our application. Now our save and delete page probably don't require it because those are invisible pages, right? They just connect to the database, 
do a database operation and redirect. But I would say there are two other places we probably want to have the header. Yeah, let's put it on our login page and well, the edit page, we've already done. This is the edit page, right? Athlete is used for both adding and editing. What's the other page that users can see? Yeah, our register page. So let's add the header here as well. Now, we've got a couple of choices. Let's put the header on, and then we're going to have to figure out what to do about those links. We've got a couple of options. So I'm going to open up my login page and my register page. So I'm going to do the same thing on login. I'm going to take out everything in green. So from the doc type all the way down to and including the opening body tag. Bye. We'll set a title and require once. I'll do the same thing on the register page. I'll just change the title from login to. So I'll just go to my register page, delete everything. Whoops. So I'm going to upload my login and register page and they should have our navigation bar as well. Then we have a choice to make. So now if I go back to register, here's my nav bar. If I go to login, we get our nav bar. Now there's one potential issue with our navigation bar this way and we have a few different ways we can deal with it. What issue potentially do we have here? I mean, this works okay. The links, the links that we have in our nav bar, do those go to public pages or private pages? They go to private pages, right? Now, it's not really a huge problem because what's going to happen, so I'm not logged in here, what will happen when I try to go to one of these two? Yeah, I'm going to stay on the login page, right? So those links, so one approach is to say, no problem. We can just show the nav bar this way. Because we've put authentication checks on those pages, it really doesn't matter if a user sees those links. If they click them, they're going to go to the login page. So that's one approach, is we could just leave it as it is. Okay? We have two other options. If we're at all concerned that maybe this isn't the most secure, we don't even want to show users the URLs of those private pages if they're not logged in. There's two other ways we could do this. What, what, what would our other choices be? How could we make it so that those links are visible here, once you're logged in, those links are visible, but on the register and login page, yeah, you still get a header that looks like this, but you don't see those links. Okay, yeah, explain a bit more. You're on the right track. Uh, so, you create an array of uh, all the links you want to give on the okay. bar. And then, if the user's on the login page, you, you have a different array for that. Okay, we could do that. How else could we do it? So, we have the same header, but one version shows the links and one version doesn't. 
if statement in header PHP and just choose not to echo it if not logged in? That's a great idea. Okay. Now there's another option as well. The other option is we could have two versions of the header. We could have a private header and a public header, basically where they're the same, but the public version doesn't include those that section, and login and register could use those. I like your version. It's more modular and more efficient. Okay. So we still want to have the nav bar with the link, but we can wrap this in an if statement. Oops. So So let's check. So if the user is authenticated, show the navigation links. So how do we check if the user is authenticated? We don't want to use our auth page because our auth page will just take them back to the login and redirect them. We don't want to redirect here. We just want to show these links if we know who this person is. So what's the first thing we have to do when we're checking their identity? Even before that. So we've got a call session start. And then we can say if, right? If it's not empty, so we'll check the same value that we checked in auth. So here's our auth page, right? So if it's empty, we're taking them to log, and we're just doing the reverse. If it's not empty, now we could use an echo. What I'm going to do instead is just close my PHP tag here, and then I'll open a new one here. open and close. I could write all of this out with an echo command, but I think I'll just do it that way because <laughs> we already have it as HTML. So this HTML is only printed if this condition is true. We access the session and we found a valid ID. So this way, on the login and register page, if the user's not logged in, they won't see those links. But every time the header loads, this if condition will run. So once they're logged in, the user will get those links. I think we did this correctly, but we'll upload it. We'll try it out. So I'm going to upload header. So now in Chrome, I'm not logged in. What do I need to do to fix this? So on my login page, we need OB start at the top. flush. We'll probably need this on the register page as well. I have a feeling if I go to register, I'm going to get the same. Yeah. So we can't access the session without those. So I'll add my OB start and flush. to both register and log in. Let's try again. There, so my links are hidden. If I go to log in, no links. But did we break anything here or do these still work? 
If I go to list, yeah, I'm logged in so I get those links. So now we have a nav bar that can work both for public, for anonymous users, as well as for private users. This is basically what Blackboard does here, right? So things like this, how it can, there's an if statement here that checks what role I'm in and determines whether to print out this section or not, right? Depending on who's logged in. Same thing here, right? Once we're logged in, we see our names. If we're not logged in on Blackboard, nothing there. So this, our application, we're getting there. We're not totally done. There are a few other things we need to do to polish it off and clean it up. Does anybody have any questions so far? Anything we've done, done not clear? Any code you want to see again? Is that a question or no? <laughs> so we're getting this towards, you're seeing it starting to be more and more of a real application, the kind of thing that you know, you're going to have to build when you go out to work. So what we will do, we're going to take a break here. We're going to need to deal with the bottom of the page. It looks unfinished compared to what we would expect to see at the bottom of a web application. So we're going to have to deal with that. And we've also got these tags here. So we'll want some kind of shared footer. We also have no way to log out, right? So we're going to want to add log out. And again, that's probably going to get wrapped in here, right? There's no log out link. We only show the log out link once somebody has logged in. We should also add like a register link too. Because we've got a registration page, but nobody can get it. Great idea. So what we probably want here is we'll want an else, right? So if they're logged in, we'll show those links and log out. And if they're not logged in, we'll show links to register and log in instead. Great idea. OK, so let's take a 10 minute break, and we'll do all that stuff when we come back. And then I'll give you guys your lab. Um, actually, we may not get to the lab today. It may have to go till next week, because the lab is mostly on error handling, which we may or may not get to. So we'll see. Lab may get postponed.